Hello and welcome to my third tutorial offering mathematical support to Open University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. Today we're going to be looking at percentages. Now remember as technologists we have to be comfortable with handling numbers, doing calculations and expressing our answers in a sensible format. The idea of these tutorials is to assist TM111 students with the mathematics of handling big and small numbers and presenting them in a meaningful way. Often we're looking at changes in our numbers and a better way of actually presenting these changes is to use percentages. Now we're used to seeing percentages in everyday life. On the left, the one that usually says a sale or something like that, 10% off, 20% off. The one on the right is often re uh, referred to in news items talking about inflation. I've talked about these percentages of being controlled and uncontrolled because it's down to a shop as to how much they put onto a sale item and how much they can take off. Whereas inflation depends upon so many other factors, it's difficult to predict exactly what it's going to be like. So we've used the word percentage and it's often shown in mathematics with this symbol uh, as a bar with two zeros. Historically, uh, it comes from the Latin, uh, means percentum by the hundred. And indeed, in ancient times, Romans used the idea of a hundredth in their taxation systems and things like that. Over the years, uh, the word has been contracted down to percento from the Italian, then finally down to cento, where we end up with this particular symbol representing a line divided by a hundred. We show that as the two zeros. So why do we use percentages? Well, percentages are a good way of actually evening things out a little bit, putting everything onto a common grounding where we can refer to things in a common way. For instance, if we were to look at this list of fractions, it's obvious perhaps which is the biggest fraction, which is the smallest fraction. But sometimes when we look at numbers, it's very difficult to see which one is bigger or smaller. For instance, is 5 sixth bigger or smaller than 7 eighths? Now, you might actually have a feeling for this already, but in actual fact, you'd be surprised these two numbers are very near to each other. They only differ by only a few percent, with 7 eighths being the bigger, but 5 6 is not far behind. So you can see how percentages can actually show us a little bit more meaning to the fractional values behind them. So basically, we changed a fraction into a percentage. Now, how did we do this? Well, first of all, if we have a fraction like three quarters, I can convert this into a percentage by multiplying by 100. Three quarters times 100 gives me 75. And then we add the little percentage symbol on the end to tell the reader that this is a percentage. If my fraction is already in a decimal format, then we just simply move the decimal point two places to the right. We're going to be multiplying by 100. And again, we'll get the same answer. Surprise, surprise. However, sometimes we do want to go backwards. We might want to change uh, a, a, a percentage back into a fractional value. In this case, we divide by the 100. After all, that's what the percentage sign represents. It's 25 divided by 100, giving me a quarter. So 25% can be represented as an, in a fractional way as a quarter. Now this table here just summarises how we can go from fractions to percents to decimal numbers and decimal numbers to percents and back to fractions again. So the idea of multiplying by 100 from a fraction to a percent, multiplying by 100 and simplifying the answer a little bit. But don't forget to add that percentage symbol on the end. Going from a percent to a decimal, don't forget to remove the sign and then divide by 100. So this table gives you a little summary of what we're actually doing to convert one to the other. The idea of representing a percent um, is useful when we want to compare to two different figures. So often in our work we see changes in systems or services. For example, a production line in one factory might have increased its production from 1000 units per hour to 1200 units per hour. In another factory, production has decreased from 2000 units to 1800 units per hour. And we want, might want to compare these two changes and we we talk then about a percentage change in the two factories. We want to compare and contrast. How do we calculate a percentage change? Well, we calculate a percentage change by first of all finding out what's called the fractional change. And then we multiply the fractional change by 100. We, we do this by working out a fractional change, which is the new value minus the old value, divided by the old value. That gives me the fractional change. 
then I multiply by 100 and that will give me a percentage. So if I was to consider factory number one, factory number one, remember the production increase from 1000 units per hour to 1200 units per hour, the percentage change is the new value, 1200, minus the old value, divided by the old value, and then multiply by 100. Well, the difference is 200 divided by 1000 multiplied by 100 gives me a percentage change of 20%. This is actually a percentage change positive, it's increased. But in my second factory, production decreased from 2000 units per hour to 1800 units per hour. So our percentage change in this case is going to be 1800 minus 2000, which will give me a negative figure, it gives me a negative figure of 200. So again, doing the mathematics, I find out that this is a percentage change of minus 10%. We've gone down in our production. So a percentage symbol here allows me to show an overall change within a production. Now, of course, we're used to seeing percentage changes on the high street. So let's have a look at an example here where a coat, for instance, might be for sale. And that coat might cost £180. And the sale price is actually 10% reduction. So what is the new price? How do we calculate these new prices? Well, there's two ways of doing it. Both will give the same answer, fortunately. Uh, the first way might be to try and calculate what the 10% reduction is. To do that, we'll take the original price and divide it by 100. That gives me the percentage unit. And then multiply it by 10. In this case, it gives me £18. So this is the price reduction. So therefore, my new price is going to be 180 minus the 18. gives me 162. Or I can just simply work it out like this. I can say, well, 10% reduction means I'm only going to be paying 90% of my original price. In which case, I can multiply my original price by 90 and divide by 100, again, giving me £162. It doesn't matter which way we do it. We'll always get the same answer. Another way of looking at percentages is the annual increase or decreases in prices. And so let's say a year ago, a shopping basket might have cost £120, but it now costs £122.40. So what is basically the annual inflation price here? To, help to calculate the increase or the decrease in the price, remember we do the fractional change. So therefore the fractional change is the new value minus the old value. In this case, it's going to be £122.40 minus £120. That gives me a change of a £2.40. And then I divide it by the original value, £2.40 divided by 120. Notice I've kept the pounds in here because these are the units. And units in numbers are very, very important. And you see, when I divide £2.40 by £120, the pound signs cancel, the units cancel. I'm just left with a fractional value of 0 0.02. And to convert this to a percentage, I just multiply by 100, giving me uh, an inflation price of 2%. Of course, when we go shopping, we are faced with the dreaded VAT. And the VAT is a value added tax, which we add to the cost of goods to get a purchase price. So if a customer sees a laptop for sale in a computer shop and it's 300 pounds X VAT, how much will the computer cost when the VAT has been added? We can do that calculation very simply by multiplying the original price by 120 divided by 100. So we divide by the 100 to get the uh, percentage price, the unit percentage price, and we multiply it by 120 because it's gone up. We've added 20% to our percentage, to our, to our 100%. So that gives me a purchase price of £360. So we can work out percentages in all sorts of ways. Here's a very inefficient factory in an electronic production process. 5% of the products are faulty. In a batch of 1,700, how many were faulty? Again, we can work this out by working out, dividing by 100 gives me the percentage point, what is 1% effectively, then multiply it by 5, and that will give me a total number of units of 85. So you see our percentages are very easy to use in working out fractional values. Now, this is something where some people fall foul. Let's have a look at a sale. This sale says, look, there are 70% off the price of my goods. So again, let's say a coat costs £200. So the sale price will be, well, if it's 70% off, we're only going to be looking at 30%. 
So here I'm going to divide by 100 and multiply by 30, giving me the cost of the coat is now £60. Now, if the company is offering a further 10% reduction, what is the new cost of the coat? Does this 10% apply to the original percentage or is it taken off the sale price? This is very important to get this correct because we get two different answers. So if I do it in case one where I take it off the original percentage, so 70% now becomes an 80% sale price, I'm going to multiply my original £200, I'm going to multiply it by 20 over 100 because it's basically only going to cost me 20% of the original price, which is now £40. In case two, in case two, I'm going to take it off the, the new sale price after the original 70% was added. The original price of the coat was £60 after the 70% sale. I'm now going to take another 10% off, which means I, I'm going to be working out 90% of my cost. And that gives me an answer of £54. You see, there's a difference there of £14. So it's important to be very clear how we are using these percentage points. And it's important to get the terminology correct. If the 10% applied to the original 70%, we call that a percentage point. There's a percentage point change. The 70 will go to 80. If we don't see the words percentage point, and we just see the word percentage change or percentage, in which case it comes off the new value after the original percentage has been applied. In actual fact, this, this shop has done the right thing because it says a plus a further 10% off. And in very, very small print, it says selected sale prices. So it tells you here it's actually off the sale price. So this shop has been up front in telling exactly what it, how that 10% is being applied, albeit in the small print. The slides associated with this presentation and further resources can be found on my website, shown there. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and there'll be a few more to follow. Thank you very much for listening.